declaring himself as this messianic figure that they've been. Yeah, Lisan al Gib. Huh? Lisan al Gib, right? Is that how to say it? Lisan al Gib. Yeah. Lisan al Gib. That's what they okay. say. <laughs> 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 All right, welcome back, everybody. Lame Guys Podcast, episode 21. We did it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, bro, episode 21. We saw, uh, we kept our word, and we went and saw Dune a second time this week. Oh, and still Um, loved it a second time. Yeah, I still still really enjoyed it the second time. Mm -hmm. Um, So we are going to give our spoiler review today. Um, I haven't really seen many spoiler reviews on TikTok, um, but I think it's fine. I think... It's not like we get hella views anyways. Like we, no, can, yeah. yeah, I don't think we're spoiling it for anybody. So we'll still make sure before we get... I mean, if they truly, truly really want to watch it, they would have already watched yeah. it. Yeah. So Maybe. Uh, I don't know. we'll Maybe. give our spoiler review. So we'll make we'll make sure that whenever we start it, we'll get, say spoilers. That way you can tune out. But it's a great movie, bro. And I think so if you good. still... If someone, if anybody hasn't seen it still, like, bro, you have to. Like, uh, you have to go. Do you... So would you... Do you think that this is a movie... I think we said it the last time that... You can wait in uh, streaming or no, watch bro. It you have to go see it in theaters, dude. You have to like, you just have to even see it on the biggest screen possible. Even like, if you do wait and watch it, truly it at is home. grand like that. Yeah, like it's just it's so it's just another experience. So um, we'll talk about it here later. But um, where do you want to start off with today? Um. Oh, I want to bring this one up. So the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it, dude. I really do love Rogan's podcast. Yeah. But I a lot of people it. are in between about it. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. People, always, if you tell people, you know, you like Rogan, they're always like, "Oh gosh," they just, they instantly have this like preconceived notion that you just believe in everything that he believes in, like his thoughts and opinions, and like about politics and all this other. Crap. I don't know. It's he has funny guests sometimes. Yeah. I enjoy listening to. Those I think one time I talked about it with somebody when I were back back when I worked at Costco. Oh, it was Taylor. Uh, oh, remember yeah, Taylor? Yeah. Uh, when I told him I listened to Joe Rogan's podcast, he was like, "Oh." And I was like, what? And he just didn't agree with, like, a lot of things that Joe says. And I was like, oh, well, I listen to it because he has a lot of UFC fighters on there yeah, and stuff. Like, like I, I listen because he has, like, yeah. Joey Diaz. He'll yeah. have Tom Segura. Like, he has these comedians. Well, another uh, guest he had on, which I completely didn't see coming, Zack Snyder. Yeah. Zack Snyder that. was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and that caught me out of left field. Like, I, I was so ecstatic. I dropped everything, and I had to just listen to it. It's about a two-hour episode. And I've always said that. Zack Snyder truly is such a creative person, and his mind goes a million miles an hour. Oh, so I listened to a little bit of it, and this is the first time I've ever listened to like Zack Snyder speak. Like I've I've heard him speak, but this is the first time I've heard him sit down. <laughs> I've actually listened to an interview of his. I I can tell you if I have before, and I could just tell right away that his mind is just constantly yes. going. Um, uh, going back to the Man of Steel days with uh interviews, press junkets, all these you know. Q and A's and everything, and especially when it came to the Snyder Cut, as much as he went on uh, interviews and yes. everything like that, talking about it, I've always said this dude, he doesn't rest. His mind is just going and going I and going, so. and he is so creative. I, yeah. I, I, I just, you know, I, I can appreciate that. Um, so listening to his podcast, it just reiterated, like, damn, this dude does not stop, and he's going from one topic to another to another to another. And he brought up some stuff that I'm glad he did. I was really hoping they talk about anything DC, and they sure as hell did. And um, some of his comments are uh, being criticized by some fans. Some fans are loving it. Some fans are hating it. And uh, I don't know if you got to the part where he discusses Batman killing. Um, Yeah, people are hating that he – because he pretty much said, like – what did he say? He said to him he thinks of – I think he said, like, he thinks of the the Dark Knight Batman. Um, And he talks about that. Is that – am I right on that one? And he talks about the scene where – uh, the the robbers holding the guy and he's like, I'll kill him and he's like, I believe you and then he shoots him or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, that's I'll Dark re- Knight, isn't it? The Dark Knight Returns. Yes. Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, yes. yeah. Frank Miller's Dark Knight yes. Returns. So, um, fans are pretty much divided on his comments. Uh, with him saying that he thinks, not necessarily he thinks that Batman should kill, but that I mean, if he has to, he has to. And if you're okay with it, I wrote down what he said specifically. It's a pretty good quote. Uh, people are like. Well, Batman can't kill. That's canon. And I'm just like, okay, well, the first thing I want to do when you say that yes. is... Yeah, I remember that. And he said, I want to see what happens. And they go, well, just don't put him in a situation where he has to kill. 
I want to see what happens if he does. Yeah. Basically. Um, he said that's pretty much like protecting. Your yeah. God he said, well, like that's this. like you're protecting your God in a way. Right. You're making your God irrelevant. If he can't be in that situation, uh, he has to deal with it. And if he does, what does that mean? What does he stand up to? Yeah. How can he survive that? So basically what he's saying is that, and this is where people are getting all like mixed up about it, saying that, um, you know, so he's saying that Batman is a God and everything like that. And a God wouldn't do this, 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 this. No, he's saying that people hold Batman to such a higher standard that I feel like people hold him to like Superman level. Yeah. So people hold him to such a higher standard that obviously Batman's core rule is Batman doesn't kill. Batman's number one rule is he does not kill. Because it go, it goes all the way back to um, you know his parents dying and his parents getting murdered and yada yada. That's just the rule that he made. I understand that. Um, and the way Zack Snyder talks about it is he wants to deconstruct that. Okay, so if he does and he says it there, you know, basically, how can he survive that? What does it mean if he does? How does he deal with that? Uh, him breaking the rule, mm-hmm. and he he said he loves the depth it can go to, and that's why exactly in BVS, Batman does kill. He's not going to shy from it. He does. And he brings up. It's not uncommon for Batman to kill. And he talks about it in that one. Oh, talks yeah. about The Dark Knight Returns. I love that. Uh, uh, Batman anime. does kill him that one. He talk- and in BVS, he kind of does the same thing as The Dark Knight Returns. Where he pulls from the comic a little bit with the scene where the two henchmen are in a room. One of them has Martha Kent hostage. And Batman comes through the wall grabs the gun from one of the henchmen, points it to the guy that's holding Martha, and that guy's telling him, you know, drop the gun, drop the gun. You know, I'll kill her, I swear. And Batman tells him, I believe you. In The Dark Knight Returns, he shoots the guy in the head. In BVS, he just shoots the, um, I think he's holding like a flamethrower. He doesn't have, I'm lying, he doesn't have Martha in a chokehold. He has a flamethrower pointed towards Martha or something like that. I vaguely shoots, remember the he part. Shoots the flame, he shoots the tank that the flamethrower is connected to. Oh, that distracts the guy enough, and Batman lunges for Martha and saves her. Um, but nevertheless, people always had an issue with uh, Zack Snyder having Batman kill in that movie, whether it came to you know that scene or where it came to the scene where he's in the Batplane shooting down henchmen or the Batmobile shooting down uh, all these, you know, drive-away I, vehicles. I personally loved it. <laughs> Watching it for the first time, I had zero issue. Yeah. Zero. I thought, holy <laughs> crap, dude, look yeah. at that. That's, like, that's so badass. I never looked at it as, wow, really? Really? Batman doesn't kill and you're killing all these people. Like, you have one rule. You just broke it all. Not once did that go through my mind at all. I just thought, hey, this has to be one of the coolest Batman things ever. And... If that makes me like a fake ass fan, screw it, I guess. I mean, I thought I've always been a great Batman fan. I I just looked at it like this is just a Batman that's completely broken. He like his whole moral code and everything went out the window. I like to believe when Robin died and, you know, Joker killed uh Robin years ago. So this Ben Affleck Batman is just a completely monster Batman at this point. That's why he's over here branding people when they go to jail and everything like that. Like he like, he doesn't care anymore. Um and then by the end of it, when Superman dies and everything on BVS, you see him like right. turn the page. Yes. Nonetheless, um, it's just funny to me that fans are so, like such an rage that he brought this back up, and they're like saying, you know, like see, like he doesn't understand Batman. He like this a good thing he stepped away from DC. Like he he would have demolished DC and these characters and everything they stood for. Yada yada yada. But yeah, at the same time, I'm thinking, really? But Ben Affleck has to be one of the best iterations we've had of Batman. In well, our personal people, opinion, in our we, opinion, but a lot of people don't think that. No, yeah, yeah. I'm, you're right, in our opinion. Uh, the same with Superman. We think that yeah. you know his take on Superman is absolutely amazing. We've loved pretty much everything he's done for us so yes. far. Um, and I feel like people don't also talk about the amount of kills that other Batman have done, too. Um, you so know we, more about Batman than I do. So. so, I mean, he does... Batman in live action has killed people before. Dude, Batman kill count in movies. I wrote these down. Michael Keaton? At least 20 people. Oh, wow. In the, and he's had Batman... Batman from uh, 1989, and then he had the Batman Returns. And Val Kilmer's Batman, at least nine. The the Holy Grail to people, bro. Christian Bale. Christian Bale, the one that people think, you know, is Batman, you know, through and through. Yeah, 37. So are you talking about, like, uh, so are those <laughs> confirmed? Like, you're talking about 
he has moments where you think that person died. Like, uh, but there's a lot where you can see, like, oh yeah, that, that person would die. Yeah, okay. The That's one I, I the one like, I think of a lot is uh the Dark Knight when uh Batman's driving the tumbler through that uh tunnel and Joker and his henchmen are in their getaway cars or whatever, and then that one uh uh trash truck or whatever is yes. coming straight for the tumbler. Yes. And Batman just goes straight under and it just goes straight to the same that whole like yeah, cab where that. the yes. people are being held just gets squished. Yes. There's no way right, to right, me right. believe for me to believe that anyone survived yeah. that. You know, 37 kills in that one. You know how many Ben Affleck had? 15. <laughs> so <laughs> like to me, I also think it just has something to do with people just don't like Zack Snyder. So he did it, and people are just, oh, you, he doesn't know anything about Batman. But yet you have all these others that have done it before, and no one says anything. I mean, I guess Zach is the only one that's kind of gone on to, out of his way to push the limit to see, you know, make it not necessarily, I guess, known that Batman has, like, can kill. He's the only one that's ever come out and mention it. But yet at the same time, it's just like, are we just going to ignore the past? Well, too? I think. I think a lot of people don't like Zack Snyder too, just because he openly try to change some comics, but that's fine. Like, there's no one set version of Superman. There's no one set version of Batman. Like, I'm not a, a historic comic person, but I even know that there's not one set version of this character or this character or this character. And multiple people have done different iterations. Of, like, so I don't understand why people get so upset with Zack making. I loved his take on Superman, and I loved his take on Batman. I would have loved to have Ben Affleck be Batman for so much longer, bro. I I thought that Batman was a nice, different iteration that we that we had from Christian Bale. Like Christian Bale was uh like a Batman, right? And then Ben Affleck was a nice refresher of just something different. Like he was Batman, but he was something completely different. And I love that. So I don't I don't know. I heard those comments of what he said, and I I fully agree. I'm not a big Batman person, so I know like there's diehard Batman people, and they say that he shouldn't kill and this and that. I think it's more realistic if he does kill. Um, I think there are certain circumstances where you have to kill. If if I was if I was Batman and Gotham, there's I just with how dark Gotham is, I don't think there is a single way that he could never kill a person. Like there's just I just don't think it's possible. I think he would have to sometimes. He would have to get his hands dirty that way. I just think it's a more realistic take. I don't know. I know they're comics, so I know they're superheroes. They're not realistic anyways. But like I just think it's a nice. I don't know. I think it's a nice, realistic, like Superman. When Superman did his thing against Zod, that was a realistic take that I think needed to happen. Bro, and he was put in that situation. I think Zach even brought that up or some, or I don't know if he brought it up or not, but Superman was put in that situation. A lot of people had issue with that, that he killed General Zod and Man of Steel. He was put in a situation where he had to he, choose. He had to choose. Either don't kill Zod and Zod's sole purpose in life was to destroy humanity because Superman took away his sole purpose, like his sole purpose, he said, you know, like uh, you destroyed Krypton and everything like that. My sole purpose was to, to protect my people. And now I have no people. And now I'm going to kill humanity. And Superman was either going to let him start with this small family or take him out. Yeah, a lot of people had issue with that. They're saying he could have flown away, you know, picked him up. This is it. In that moment, he just had to do what he had to do. And to me, I saw no issue with it. Yeah. People had a ton of issue with it. And this uh, in this iteration of Batman. It was either, you know, save Martha or. Or try to act in a different way and have this henchman burn her to death. I, he did what he had to do. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I I, will never see a problem, I don't think, with that. And I know that there's people that just will always see a problem with that. It is, it is what it is, bro. I mean, I know Batman has been a certain way for the age of time, forever long he's been. But, like, I don't see a problem with somebody making a different take on Batman like that. What's like, funny I, is that even in this one, bro. The Killing Joke. This yeah. has to be one of the most, you know, like famous, along with the Dark Knight Returns, Batman comics. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, you kind of allude to Batman killing the Joker. They're both having this moment where they're both like talking to each other, having this whole dialogue with each other. The the comic starts going off from them. Joker stops laughing. Yeah, I think you in the animated movie you like hear his neck snap. Or so something? yes, in the animated yes. you hear it too. Yeah, but like they kind of allude to it. So it's like still like, did he do it? Did he not? What happened? Yada yada. So it's this isn't new. Like I don't know why people act like this is so crazy. Yes, okay. If I had to choose between a you know, do I want now every comic issue to have Batman killing? No, because if I want that, I'm just gonna go read Punisher. Yeah, but. At the same time, it's like if he has to get his hands dirty, that's fine. Like it's yeah. not going to completely diminish who he is. And I I like the way Zach said it. If he does kill, 
how is that going to affect him? How is he going to get better? How is he going to teach himself he can't do that again? Like, what does he want to do? And that's just interesting character uh, story right there. Uh, I mean, hmm. there are certain moments. So, like, right now I'm reading Injustice, and I'm on the last volume. And in Injustice, the whole story is, you know, you know, I think everybody kind of knows. Like, Superman just kind of – I wouldn't even necessarily goes rogue, but he just doesn't care anymore. Like, he's, like – he's saying this is how it's going to be. So that way, no people die. Like essentially, like he's he's got good intentions, but he's not going about them the, the right way. Um, and Batman, his whole thing is Superman did the wrongest thing you could do: murder people. And so Batman, the story now is five years in, and Batman's still fighting Superman because he still thinks that Superman, and rightfully so, Superman in in year five, dude is is like dictator Superman. Like he's he is doing bad things. Um, but, Homelander style? Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily like Homelander, but yeah, I mean he he just really does not care. Like yeah. he, anybody that steps up to him, he, he, whether it's his friend or not, like he does They're not down. care. And um, so, but his whole thing is the whole murder aspect in that in that in that story. It's very strong. Like it it's proven multiple times again that that's Batman's biggest thing, and Superman did the worst thing you could do is is kill. And so. I, I just think people hold those types of stories like highly regarded and I just think it's hard for them to see Batman not not be that way. And so I don't know. I it's a good story and I like it, but like I wouldn't care if I saw a different take. I can separate the two. Like I can see that this person's Batman didn't kill. That's fine, one hundred percent. But if this if there's a Batman over here, like a different version, I dude, I think uh Batman's dad, uh Thomas Wayne. Uh, the whole flashpoint, flashpoint Batman point stuff. Uh, I think that's so cool. Yeah. And I think that's a more realistic version of, of what <laughs> a Gotham person Batman would be. Like I know it's not the actual Batman, but to me, I just feel like that's what you you would need in a Gotham. Dead at like so I don't know. I think that's such a cool take on him. So I don't see anything I don't see anything wrong with what um Zach did. No, neither do I. And I, so. all that to say yeah. I still love this guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I it's and I love how he talks about. Um, he pretty much has a rated R version of like everything. It sounds like yeah. everything that he said. Um, and he said like Netflix hooked him up and he got to make Rebel Moon. He got to make a rated R version that's gonna come out in uh in summer. Oh yeah, the end and, of summer. Yeah, and uh, I I and then he talked about how Batman vs Superman the ratings they kept giving them an R rating. Because they didn't want to see Batman fight Superman. But yeah, literally the damn movie is called Th- Batman that, and Superman. But yeah, the studio was saying, we just don't want to see Batman yeah. fight Superman. That's what he said. Why? He was like, I can't take this out of the movie. Like it's, And so I think he said uh, in the director's cut um, or whatever it is, the you see a bigger, it's a longer fight. The theatrical uh, edition, or yeah, compared to the theatrical uh, and the director's cut of it, it's only an extra 30 minutes. But there's a lot of more key elements that fleshes it out a little more. And I personally like it a lot more. The extended edition. Yeah. So I don't know, dude. I thought he did well. I, it's unfortunate what happened with the whole situation, and who knows where we would have where we would have got to if not for his daughter. And um, yeah, man, it's just I don't know. It was a good interview. I I didn't listen to it fully, but yeah, I yeah, it's two hours long, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. I want another one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to move on to Dune? Yeah, let's do Dune. Um, um, sorry. So we're gonna give our spoiler review on Dune. This is going to be as if you sat with us and you watched this movie with us. If you watched it twice with us, you have you you got a bucket of popcorn, you mm-hmm. sat there with your Coke, your Dr. Pepper, or whatever. You enjoyed this movie with us, and we're just going to talk just like Yeah, kind of how we've done all our other reviews. So. Yeah, so, and we understand this is still a new movie, so if you do not want to watch or, or hear anything about Dune, yeah, Mario will put some timestamps in here I'll or something have time like that. timestamps in the video, and then audio-wise, just skip... Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> just I don't know, dude. I I don't know how to really edit that as far as audio goes. But, <laughs> You'll uh, tell a difference because after this, we're going to be talking about WWE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, just skip, I guess. But so let's get into it, bro. I mean, you want to start? Or you want me to? Or uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll go for it. So, watching it a second time, I was able to put together a lot of stuff that I missed, and there really was a lot of stuff I missed. So I'm really glad I watched it a second time. I think we talked about it even after, the, um. There were yeah, the there were little things that I picked yeah, up. There on. were small things that I didn't understand, or not not necessarily understand, but I didn't catch the first time. Um, some big thing, the I just mainly wrote down key scenes that I absolutely adored, dude. And these are gonna be all out of order compared to what the movie went through. Let's just talk about this: the Paul and Fade scene. Oh yeah, it was, it's it's amazing. Pa- oh, Fade Har- uh, Harkonnen. Fade Rotha. Yeah. Fade Rotha Harkonnen. There it is. Amazing fight scene. The choreographed fight was incredible. 
um, there there was a moment where I just thought, bro, how is Paul about to do this? Oh, how before, is he about before you to keep going, um, sorry to cut you off. You're good. Are people glazing this movie? Is this me? Is this movie being too overglazed? Like, are are even we? Are we overglazing it? <sighs> okay, so I thought about this too. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think it's worth the glazing, like it, and I think even more so. I think even then, some it needs more. Like, I think it, I think it's worth it. Uh, we weren't. I mean, you saw Lord of the Rings, but like. I don't think we were at an age where even if I did go see Lord of the Rings, I would understand the grand, like of how grand it is. So like our parents got to see that, like our parents got to see Star Wars when it first came out and stuff like that. This, like we got to fully wit, like understand how big like this is. Um, so I, I think it, I think it's worth. I think it, it's to what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's, it's the uh, right amount of glaze. Yeah, like I think it even needs more. So, um. Talking about as far as the glaze and everyone uh, trying to discuss the Lord of the Rings aspect or the Star Wars aspect, and people are saying you can't compare it to Star Wars, you can't compare it to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that makes zero sense to me because every generation has their big movies like that. So for our parents, they were watching Star Wars and everything like that, and to them that was the newest of new. They've yeah. never seen anything like that. Like technology, innovation, all that stuff was. You can't believe what you're watching, and that's fine. That's understandable. Then you uh, got, you know, parents got a little older and everything like that. This is just, you know, maybe 20 years. This is about 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago when the Lord of the Rings stuff came out. I've watched it before, but I've never seen any of them in theaters. So I can only imagine That's maybe I'm... being, you know, 15, 16 or whatever and older watching it in theaters and being absolutely like mind blown, mind blown the way Lord of the Rings was wh- what I was watching on screen. Like, that's going to be a fun one when you watch it. Like, I hope that if they put it back in theaters that screw it we'll go watch it so yes. you can see how crazy it's and I, I mean i would like to see it on the big screen but every generation needs a movie like this and for us luckily right now in uh where we're at hell even with this podcast dune is that yeah there's a reason why there's uh people saying this movie's gonna be talked about for the next 10 years why well because hell lord of the rings was talked about for 10 lord years of the rings is still talked about yeah and it's like. still talked about Tra- uh, Star Wars Star is Wars, still yeah. being talked about. What fifty years now mm-hmm. on all this stuff? Like, dude, this type of movie that comes around once in a while, and you have to truly give it its flowers. You just have to appreciate it, bro. Yeah, you have to. And, I and feel you like know, the funny thing don't. is, three years from now, people are still going to talk about oh, is this sci-fi movie compared to Dune, and that's fine. Nothing's wrong with that. As far as the amount of glazing and everything when it comes to this movie, it deserves it. Th- this movie truly is that good. Yeah. It is. Th- I mean, John Campion says this is a damn near perfect movie. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I agree. Yep. All right, sorry, you can go ahead. Um, the Paul and Fade scene, dude, their action sequence was amazing. amazing. And you know what I also left? No music. It was just them. You felt like you were fighting. there. You felt like you were in the room. Yeah, dude, I don't know about you, but even watching it the second time, I was so, like, even though I knew everything that was going to happen, I just felt myself catching my breath. Yeah, it was, it was um, amazing. Fade, uh, well, well, how do you say Fade Rotha? Rotha. Okay, I don't know why we, I want to say Brotha. <laughs> Fade Rotha. Awesome Butler nailed that character. Absolutely killed it. I don't know anything about him in the books. I don't know anything about him in the original movie. I don't care. This is who he's supposed to be. I thought he did an amazing job. Paul is that dude in that scene. For real, figures out a way on how Paul to defeat this. Paul Atreides. What dude. badass names, bro. Fade Rotha, Paul Atreides. Yeah. Like, God, bro. <laughs> what fucking badass names. Uh, okay, but is it the badass names because they just are badass names or badass names because of who well, they are? Well, I just are. think about, too, like uh, Paul Atreides. Like Atreides is a badass name. Okay. House Atreides. Fade Rotha. Like, bro, what? And, and, like That's, <laughs> that's a crazy-ass name. But, okay. yeah, just um, that fight scene was absolutely beautiful. The scene where I say – or the part where I was saying – there's some stuff I didn't catch is Paul has a vision um, way before their fight of the blade. Yes. Him holding the blade or whatever, letting go in the blade and everything like that. And just watching it in a vision stance, you have no idea what the hell he's doing. You, you Okay. Just a random ass knife, yes. but no, it's alluding to the fact that later he's going to get in a fight with uh, faith and he's going to win by s- taking the blade basically out of his shoulder and stabbing it into fate, and he wins. Mm. And it was basically um, the fight was to um, for emperor, right? Or not emperor? Yeah, or like was... for the emperor to bend the knee, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's essentially like pick your champion because like we're gonna run it, and then if I win, then I'm gonna be the emperor, and then if I lose, then obviously you still be the emperor. Yeah. And the emperor is played amazingly just in the small scenes he's in. 
by the legendary Christopher Walken. Yeah. And I thought he did good. His daughter, Florence Pugh, was there mm-hmm. standing by his side. And the big twist, bro. Let's but let's get into that next part. The big twist prior to the fight was saying, you know, uh, Paul was telling Chani, you know, I will love you, you know, forever, basically. You know, you will always be the love of my life and all this shit. Turns around, walks up to the emperor, tells him basically, you know, I'm I'm taking this shit. And if you want, like I I'll take your daughter in hand, like I'll take your daughter's hand in marriage. Bro, the first time we watched it, the gasps in that theater. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just thought to myself, what the hell, dude? Like you literally just telling this woman that you love, I will love you forever. You know, you basically you it for me. You gonna turn around, look at Florence Pugh, and be like, mm, "Yeah, I'll take that one instead." <laughs> now let's just talk about this one. If you're Paul Atreides, Florence Pugh or Zendaya, <laughs> Chani or the Princess, who are you picking? Uh, so me from like a just like a misogynistic like <laughs> guy way, I'm going Florence Pugh. They're both beautiful. Um, but like from a Paul Atreides aspect, I genuinely think that he would pick Chani. Um, yeah. and apparently this is not a spoiler because the book's been out for a long time, so you know whatever. Uh, apparently in the book, Paul says, uh, he says that he'll take princess, a uh, princess Irulan, I think is her name, Florence Pugh's name. Um, but he straight up tells Flor, he tells the princess, I'm not going to do anything with you though. Like Chani's his girl and Chani's going to bear his children. Uh, so we don't get that in this mo- in the movie, but in the book, he's, he's, he's still about Chani. Like he doesn't. So he tells prin- the princess that like, this is literally just a strategic, Formality. a strategic alliance. Chani is the one that's gonna have my kids, and I'm doing nothing with you. You know what? You know what it reminds me of House of Dragons, dude. Princess I told Renea. You, I remember? told you. I need to say it again, but like this, I just felt like this was Game of Thrones, House of Dragon on steroids. And my yeah. mom asked if she would like it, and I told her yes because I think. Now, granted, she's got to watch the first one first, but it's just I felt like it was just like a more in depth, more sci fi. Game of Thrones type thing, like House of Trades, like the great houses are coming, like House Harkin, like bro, that's just I just love that shit. That's just so badass. Yeah, because didn't they do that though in House of Dragons though, where Princess Renea she had to get married to what's his yeah, face, but he was married and everything yes, like that. Yeah. So that on on the surface they were you know husband and wife, but yeah, behind the scenes he had a boyfriend and she had a whole ass other dude, yeah. and, and her she's kids getting were and by she's getting guy. pregnant by the other dude. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A spoiler alert if you haven't seen House of Dragons, you know, but watch it. What the hell? Um, that scene was crazy. Oh. My answer, yeah, I'll go Florence Pugh. Both beautiful actresses. Um, I love them and everything they've been in so far that I've personally seen. Both in the MCU. So MJ or Yelena, I'm picking Yelena, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but uh, nevertheless. Um, dude, Paul Atreides is that man. He really is. Um, I'm pretty sure you're going to want to talk about this, so I just want to bring it up. When Paul stands before the Freeman... Uh, yes, I love that War scene Council. So much. I think it has to be my favorite scene in the whole movie. The movie is filled with amazing action. The movie is filled with amazing shots of like beautiful scenery and all this stuff. Even the final battle is incredible. But just the scene with him pulling up before the War Council and letting him know, I'm that dude, basically. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. And the part that you love the most, <laughs> do you want to talk about that? Um, yeah, so like he pretty much pulls up, and uh, the I mean, you have to see the movie to understand what the Fremen are. Yeah. Um, like the, like in Game of Thrones aspect, that kind of assemble them with like the Dothraki. Like oh, that's kind of yeah. how I think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Fremen are just badass motherfuckers. Every single one of them can scrap. Like every, you just know. And that's where Zendaya, uh, she's a Fremen yes. or whatever. Uh, and Javier Bardem is yes. a Fremen. So they're yeah. all just Fremen and they're there and he pretty much tells everybody, fuck your ways. Like this is the way it's going to be <laughs> now and none of y'all can step up to me anyways. And every single one of these motherfuckers, even the old ones, <laughs> stand up, pull their blades out and say, what? And even his girl, Chani, stands up and what's his face? Josh Brolin's character. Uh, I think he wrote his name. I can't remember his name. Oh, I didn't write his name. Uh, Gurney, mm, yeah. even Gurney has to hold her back because this is her man. Keep in mind, and she's like, "Bitch!" And like she's <laughs> gonna go up there and say, "Who can't step up to?" I you? can't remember the line he says, but basically, yeah, saying that you know none of you can yeah. do it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I just love this because it just shows how badass first off the Fremen are, and then and then what happens after that, like just goes to show how badass uh, what's his face is Paul, Paul Atreides. Atreides is. Yes, like it so. Um, yeah, him basically just pulling up, talking about all that stuff and declaring himself as this messianic figure that they've been. Yeah, Lisan Al-Gib. Huh? Lisan Al-Gib, right? Is that how to say it? Lisan Al-Gib. 
Yeah. They sound like Gibe. That's what they okay. say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Javier Bardem does it every once in a while. I just say, like, as it's written <laughs> or as it was written. Yeah. I just love it so much. Um, yeah, they, I mean, the Fremen truly believe in this messianic figure that's uh, this prophecy that's like supposed to come. This Messiah that's supposed to come and free them. And Paul shows up and he's basically fulfilling all these prophecies that's been going on in, in, their, in their scripture, in their books, as it was written. And they keep on talking about that. Um, and then you also have the new Fremen, you know, discussing, you know, like, it's the old way of thinking. It's the old way of thinking. There is no prophecy, you know. If you wait for a prophecy, you're going to be waiting for decades and generations. Like, you well, and, never and there really see wasn't. It. It, it, was, uh, it was those ladies. What are they called? The Reverend uh, Mothers? The Reverend Mothers, but they're called something else. I they're, remember what they're called. Uh, but they, they uh, Florence Peace talks about it. Though. They they spread that ideology. They had people in over there in the south where they thought it was unhabitable they had people over there spreading these false ideologies to keep them in control like to keep them in fear and so yeah it, they spread it like it wasn't even a real thing so technically i mean i just think about it right now you can technically say chani was woke yeah chani knew she, she knew and she, she said, she it, said it, it in that war council you know this prophecy is the way they control us yes. if you know if you can't see it yet and then she gets pulled down by josh and it actually was yeah i mean yeah i honestly didn't even think about it until you just brought it up right yeah. now um but uh, I'll let I'll let you take uh, take the rest or whatever. But I mean, more stuff as far as like Stillgard's faith or whatever. Um, the introduction of Freyd Rotha, Lady Jessica turning into the Reverend Mother. You know, Chani got some explaining to do, bro. She over here making out with Paul Atreides, but yeah, she got whole ass Spider Man on the other side. <laughs> but like, what the hell's going on with that, um, dude? The big twist of Paul finding out after he takes the uh, the Water of Life, right? Yeah, the him finding out that he's a Harkonnen. Mm. That's wild, dude. Yeah. I didn't see that he's one half coming. Half a half of Yep. <laughs> when he kills Baron, he's a grandfather or whatever. And then I even love the part whenever he he's about to fight uh, Freyd. I know I'm going all over the place, but this everything's just coming at me right now. Um, when he meet, uh, pulls up with uh, Freyd and he tells him, you know, cousin. He goes, cousin. Yeah. <laughs> and he tells him, what you know, I've killed a relative before and everything. Oh, I love all that scene. All those scenes. Um, uh, another cool one. Paul rides a grandfather worm. Though he could have pulled any little ass worm and he called the Mac Daddy of them all, dude. And it just goes to show what everyone's saying that, bro, this is the prophecy. This is him. Mm. We've been waiting for this dude. And, you know, only the prophecy could have uh, written the grandfather worm. And Paul does it like it's nothing, bro. Yeah. Uh, such a great ass guy, yeah, dude. dude it, it, <laughs> what a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, so, I mean, yeah, everything you said, really. Uh, I just want to start off with like, a movie like Dune 2 is why we go to the movies. Like, it is literally the reason you go is to be, like, captivated in that way. And, I mean, it does that in every way. And I said this last episode, I, I'm trying to think of a movie that was this grand, but I don't think there is one in our time that we've been going to the movies. Like, we, we've said Star Wars, and we've said – I mean, and you're big on Star Wars, but, like, Star Wars now, I don't think – the grandness hits the same as it did, I'm sure, when it first came out. Like, that was a whole new type of movie genre, like, to be made. So I could assume that, like, back then it was just wild. Um, Lord of the Rings, we weren't there for, really. Like, it, we were born, but we weren't, like... What, what year did Lord of the Rings come out? 2000? Mm. 2002? I mean, it was, like... I want to say, I believe, 2000, 2003 right? to, like, six. I yeah. could be wrong, though. Um, so, right, we're, like, seven. So yeah. we can't understand the grandness of it all. This movie, we are able to fully appreciate how grand it is, and I just, I loved it, bro. So we went and saw it twice, both first and second time. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Um, I, We had to go see it a second time just to fully validate, like, how we felt about it, because last episode, we were just on an emotional high. Um, This episode, we, we've we had some time to simmer. It, we saw it twice, and we watched it Tuesday, so we've already had, like, a few days to simmer. I still think... I, I don't know how I don't give it a 10. Like, I, I just think the little flaws that I feel like I have with it, I just don't feel like it's worth taking a whole point away. Like, and, and maybe maybe I'm sure if I really took how I feel about this movie out, like, it, maybe it would be, like, a 9. But even then, like, a 9 is great. Like, a 9 is, is fantastic. Um, So, Denis Villeneuve, he's the director. Um. I want to so I know that we uh last episode we said we were gonna do we were gonna try to pick another uh rewind review movie. Um so here I have a list of Denis Villeneuve movies that he's done. Um he's done Dune Part One and Two, obviously. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I didn't know people held this movie super high like highly right, like they I was do. looking at Harrison Ford. Yep. 
I didn't know that people because I felt like I I think me and you were working at Costco at the time it came out, but I don't re- really remember a lot of talk about it. Like even on social media, and maybe that's just because I just I don't know I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. So uh, he did Sicario, which I've seen. Um, Arrival and Prisoners. I've heard Arrival is very good. I've heard Prisoners is is good too. I think Prisoners has Hugh Jackman in it. Yeah, it does. Jake okay. Gyllenhaal. Okay. Um, so I was gonna ask. Uh, Blade Runner 2049 is up there for one of the best sequels ever. Like I sent you a picture of, of sequels, and we'll talk about it here later. But um, have you seen Blade Runner 2049? I have not. Should we make that our movie that we watch for a real wine review? Would that mean I have to watch the first Blade Runner? I don't know. I think the first Blade Runner came out a while ago. so It's old. So I think that you don't have to. But I, I'm not 100% sure. The only, I, from my understanding, and this is me not knowing anything about nothing, Harrison Ford is the only thing they bring back. From the first one, because he was in the first one, obviously. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I have no idea. I think idea. I remember people, someone telling me that you could watch Blade Runner 2049 and be fine. I don't know. But, like, should we make that our movie just to pay our respects to Denis since he did such a good job with this one? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I uh, was going to say, I thought you were going to say, like, between uh, Prisoners, Arrival, and... I mean, if you want one of those, I mean, I've heard Arrival is really good too. Prisoners is dark though. I I don't think we'd like Prisoners just because we've had we have kids now and oh, does it, it have to do with that? Yeah, a kid, kids kidnap. It, it, you know who it has? It has uh the guy who plays the Riddler, Paul Dano. Yeah, he's the bad guy in it, and I think he's the one who takes the kids. Oh, I think I saw a scene on TikTok uh with Hugh Jackman. I think he said. And now you're saying it. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman's kid is the one who gets taken. That makes sense then, because Hugh Jackman is going off yes. on paul dano or whatever and like they're talking about like i've heard it's a dark movie yes yeah, so i've heard it's good the but scene it's... was crazy yes i've heard so like i don't know yeah, how... i don't know if i want to yeah, see all that right. right now so that's why i didn't blade runner that. sounds good yeah, okay. do we, do we know where it's at uh i don't know but i'll I look it up go we, for yeah, it yeah i figure we could figure, figure it out anyways denis villeneuve did a fantastic job with this movie um we me and you have never read the books of dune um so we are going into this with like a – what is it on? Hulu. Okay, perfect. So we are going into this with like a completely blind – like we're literally just hope – depending on these movies to be good, right? Denis Villeneuve kills it. He makes it to where you can understand everything and like you're not really confused. Now, granted, you have to see the first one. I feel like if you don't see the first one, then you're confused on everything. Yeah. And there's still some stuff – like there's some clips on TikTok that I've seen that like in the first part I don't even remember. So I want to go back and watch the first one also. Um, you know what I forget that Jason Momoa was in the first one. Yeah, I've been seeing some clips of him, and yeah. I don't remember like he had this many speaking roles, I and like, he went Duke, with the Duck, Fremen. I can't remember. Duncan he went with the like Fremen, that. and he talks to them about how the Fremen, like uh, was the most skilled fighters, like he never thought he was gonna die in a fight till he fought a Fremen. Like I don't remember any of those parts really of the first one, so I I want to go back and watch it. Stacked cast, like I mentioned last ep- last episode, Timothy Chalamet, Austin Butler, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, Harvey R. Bardem, Florence Pugh. There's still a lot. Josh Brolin. There's still a lot of people that I'm missing. Dave Bautista. Um, there's still a lot of people that I'm missing, but those are the people that I wrote down just because I was going to talk about them in this. Um, I just there's a lot that I could say, and it's kind of like how you were doing it. Like I just feel like I'm going to be all over the place just because. It's just there's so much. To See, and I've just in, been bro. waiting. I've just been so like there's me going all so over the place. Much is just to take in. Um, I wrote some things here just to talk about visually. This movie is beautiful. Beautiful. Like, uh, what's the planet that they're on? Um, Iraq. Arrakis. 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 Ah. They do it beautifully, bro. Yeah. The desert, every single desert scene hits. Spice. Like, every single, like, just, it's just, it was just amazing. And I love, the whole, the whole movie takes place on um, Arrakis. Pretty much. And so. Uh, like, you have was, the small scenes where you go to wherever the Harkonnen live, but that's it. Yes. Um, the Fremen were fantastic. I I told you earlier, just earlier. I I kind of associate with them with like the 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 Dothraki. Like they they stay over there. They're on their side, but they are straight about that action, bro. Like they are just that's how they live. Like they're about that action. Um, the Harkonnens were scary. Like they're pretty much just they live in a world where their sun is black, and like that's why they're that's why when we get the gladiator scene with Fade Rotha, like it's just the, that's why it looks the way they look. It's all I kind of like associate them with Russia. Like the way, they, <laughs> yeah. Like bro. the way you see their military and shit. Yeah. The whoo, like they are like. I just kind of just got like a rush. I like the vibe. way they cheer. They don't clap. They just go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bro. Even uh, what's his face? The the main Harkonnen guy, Vladimir. Yeah. Vladimir is it Vladimir Baron? Uh, uh, Harkonnen. Uh, Baron Harkonnen. Yes. Yeah, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. Okay, uh, Vladimir is like a Russian. So like I just kind of <laughs> just associated them with like a Russian genius. Um, 
But, bro, they were done well. Like, Fade Rotha steals the show. Fade Rotha. So you have Dave Batista, You have Vladimir. Or you have, uh, what's his face? Stellan Skarsgård. And then you have Austin Butler. Austin Butler steals the show from both of them, in my opinion. Yeah. Dave Batista got treated like a little bitch in this movie. Yeah, he really did. Like, they, and he did he did very well in the first one. Yeah, but in this one, completely gets bitched out, like little brother, and he's the big brother. Yeah, Fade Rotha beats his ass and pretty much tells him like, if you don't kiss my feet, I'm gonna kill you, and he yeah. would have. Um, and then, bro, I mean, Fade just Austin Butler. I my only one of my critiques is I just wish he was in the movie longer. Yeah, I w- I wish I thought he was gonna be like we. I think we were like a, over a past an hour in, and he still wasn't even introduced yet. Um, so uh, I thought, God damn, when is he gonna be in? And so, but even in the scenes that he was in, they just felt grand. They felt like he just he steals it every single time. I feel like he was probably in the right amount. I said it. I I want to say I think I said it in the last one, like I wish he was in it more, but I think he was in it the right amount. Well, I pro- just you just made him want you made it want it right. more. Right. And, and you're right. And I think maybe it made his his battle at the end with uh Paul. with Paul feel more because I thought that they were gonna interact even before that. Like well, at least maybe once. Like at least see each other once. And they and they don't. Um but Timothy Chalamet, it's Paul Atreides, bro, they made this motherfucker bad ass. One of the scenes I wanted to talk to you about is when Dave Batista's character, uh, oh, what's his name? I didn't write it down. I thought his name was Byron. You want me to look it up? Uh, you can. Um, I'll just stop talking so you can look it up. Do you not have it on your notes from the last one? No. Uh, oh yeah, I do actually. Or no, I think I just wrote the cast. Yeah, I just wrote the cast. I didn't write their their character name. Because I remember that? Fade Rotha Glass, goes, Glassu? what about Glassu Byron? Robin? Robin. 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 Robin or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the scene where Robin, David Batista, where he like loses his shit and goes after the Hark- or the the um, Fremen. The Fremen. And then, bro, they're in the desert, right? And it's like they just blew up a bunch of shit. So there's like you can't see. And then you see fucking Paul Atreides walking with his hood. And like all the people are like picking off. They're like assassins picking them off. That throw bad bro what's his face leaves robin leaves like yeah. he, he's scared well does he leave because he's scared or does he leave because he knows he has to go with the troops and go... i think it was both and i okay. think it, we saw him run multiple times yeah, in the movie so i think he would i think he just didn't want to die no so you're he, right because later when josh brolin uh pulls up on him or whatever he was literally about to retreat like yes, he was getting on like ship he was dip. just he's not yeah. trying to die so he's dipping and bro paul atreides is that motherfucker timothy chalamet kills it as paul atreides his whole relationship with Chani was great. Zendaya did an amazing job. Um, you were right about how, uh, I guess, if the Fremen, if they wear that blue headband, that means they're in love. Um, yeah. So she wears the blue headband, but then at the end, she takes it. Um, puts it she puts it around her arm. So who knows where that stands. Um, in the book, I saw that she's not very de- divisive on Paul's vision. Like, she just goes along with the flow. And she and just, this one, it's... And this one, she's, like, the one... She's the constant, like, hater, almost. Like, she's the constant, Tell like... About she, she woke. <laughs> she woke so, up from the stimulation. <laughs> so, I know I'm all over the place, but, like, there's so many things I wanted to talk about this movie, just because it's so good. Rebecca Ferguson as Lady Jessica. She's Paul Atreides' mom. She was... She did amazing as far as, like, being scary. The second she turned her... Do it like her little voice that she did, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you feel it, God, bro. She and and that scene where she goes, uh, where she's pretty much like talking to her daughter in her stomach, and she's like, um, "We need to make them believe, and we're gonna yeah. start with the people that fear us or that." And I just thought, what a psycho ass bitch. Speaking of the daughter, nice little surprise, dude. Yeah, we you got see a, a vision of the daughter growing up because you think it's Paul you're following or whatever because you just see like the hooded figure and everything like that going to the water, and I'm thinking, oh, look, the desert has the water. But no, it's uh, Anya Taylor Joy. Yeah. She is the going to play the sister. Now, granted, how far are we going to get into to like you know Dune three, Dune four, whatever, where you end up getting Anya Taylor Joy and Timothy Chalamet interacting? That'd be cool to see. Um, so apparently, but, in the book, she's more he plays a bigger role. Really, they just barely was it Dune Messiah, or whatever it's called. No, apparently, even in this one, I think. She oh, does, really? Yeah. Like oh, okay, apparently, okay. she's the one that kills Vladimir. No way. Vladimir, yeah, she poisons him. Oh shit! Supposedly. Um. So. She did an amazing job. Javier Bardem as Stilgar. He was like the comedic relief. Even though his stuff wasn't even trying to be comedic. It just was like it just worked just that his way. Faith. It just flowed that way. Yeah. And and it's it was they just the way that he delivered it would just it'd be the little chuckle that you'd get in the theater. Yeah. Um it's just amazing, bro. Some of the scenes you already said pretty much all the scenes that I was gonna say, but like <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Those are the scenes that would just stick out. Like they're just 
So mainly the battle at the end, bro. I guess another critique I would have is I thought the final war was going to be more of a war. The the Fremen literally just wiped the floor with, with yeah, because all them damn Atreides uh, missiles, bro. bro the missiles, <laughs> the sandworms. When the sandworms come, like I just think there's no way that the hard, like the sandworms clear easily. The sandworms. How the hell do they get off? How do they get off? How do they get on? We saw how Paul Atreides, how we, when he rides a sandworm, we saw how difficult it was to get on there, right? How the hell do they get all of them on there? How do they get all of them on is my question. Not only that, Reverend Mother, Lady Jessica, how the hell did she get her little cocoon on there? How do they strap that bitch down? I don't, bro, they moved all the Fremen from the north down to the south, and they were all riding on it. I don't know how they get all of them on there. She a lady of the north. I wish they kind of would have touched on that. The the timing you could tell like they skip a lot like yeah. they they so like uh, I wish they would have but also it was a two hour and forty minute long movie so I know it was that, a long movie yeah I know that they or they had to skip. Um, it's just sad to say that our second time watching it. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I yawned like three or four times up until we met Austin Butler's character, and then that's when I just knew. Right. Yeah. Now uh, we're gonna pick it up a little bit. I don't. I know definitely why. felt it was more long the second time watching it, but I didn't feel like I was. It was like slow or anything. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying it. I just. I don't know. I maybe it's just because I already knew what was going to happen just in the beginning. I'm like, all right, not much action. Yeah, yeah. We're just you know we're building up. We're building up. We're building up. But still, the build up is amazing. <laughs> but once we met Austin's character, I thought, all right, now I know we're about to kick it up a gear and we're gonna go full force all the way to that ending, and yeah. it's gonna be great. Yeah. Um, so then you uh, – so back to the war, the Fremen pretty much just wiped the floor. Mm-hmm. It's not even a debate. Josh Brolin's character, Gurney, kills Dave Bautista's character like nothing. Yeah, uh, bro. Thanos versus yeah. Drax, bro, was easy. Like nothing. Uh, and then, yeah, you get the scene at the end where Paul Atreides pretty much sticks up to the – to the what's he called? The Not the dictator. The uh, emperor. The emperor. And pretty much just tells him, bro, look, I'm the emperor now. And unless you have a champion to fight me for it, and he does, and it's uh Roth Bra- Roth Vader, uh Fade Rotha, and what an epic fight, dude! You like you said, there's no music with it; you just hear straight fighting, it just and fights, and dude. props to them, bro, because you see, it looks like it's just it's them doing everything. Yeah, I I was watching it the second time because in my head I was like, I wonder if it's stuntmen. Like, are they going to hide their face a lot? You their faces, their faces in a, are their faces in it pretty much the whole fight that I can think of. So I'm just thinking, damn, they had to choreograph that yep. thing to the T. Yep. And there is no, like, you sped it up or none. Oh, it's them. Yep. And I love that it was the badass. camera angles were a lot of wide shots, too. So you can see everyone in the background, everyone's reactions. So some moves, bro, you see it, some, some people in the back going, like, like they're – like they're just like ugh, getting all antsy about it. Like bro, you can yes. feel you can feel the nervousness of the Fremen when when uh, Paul gets stabbed, and you oh, could, bro, bro, you could feel like the the room sink. Like you could feel the energy level shift. And like God, it's just it's just amazing. Bro, bro. when he got stabbed the the first time we watched it, bro, that oxygen level in that theater went down because yep. everyone <gasps> they sucked nope. that shit up, bro. We were all nervous for yep. that. And well, because they do they deliver it perfectly because you even feel the silence in the room. Like you yeah. feel, and so even in the theater, you feel everyone's like. Like you don't, it is. It's just amazing, and um, the battle, like I said, was was awesome. Roth, uh, Fade Rotha. Another part I want to mention is his little mannerisms that he would do, like especially when Paul says silence, and F- Fade is like, oh yeah, shit. a lot of people on TikTok were talking about that. Like Fade you is see like, it in his face, like, like you huh. see it, like what? But not one hesitation when he says like pick your champion, and he's like, uh, what does he say? He's like, uh. I'm here, Atreides. Yeah, I'm here, Atreides. I need a blade. And so he, <laughs> and takes he a, goes, hey, take mine. Yeah, and <laughs> bro, <emperor. laughs> mother, not one single hesitation, bro. He's about that action. Like, even whenever he told him, you know, cousin, maybe there's going to be like, you know what? Hey, we cousins. <laughs> hey, we kin, but we ain't supposed to fight. He goes, I've killed cousins yeah. before. <laughs> ah, damn. It's just amazing, bro. And there's so much we could go on. And I know we're both all over the place, but like it. It was just it was an amazing movie, and I feel like if anybody hasn't seen it, you you have to go see it, and you have to go see it in theaters. I hope it does good box office wise. Like I hope even this weekend it does well. I think it's going to do well. Um, so because I think I saw last time what it was like a two hundred million or something. Was it something like that? I think earlier th- at the it did very this week. well when it came to the opening numbers. Yeah, it, it did very so, well. I just want to apologize again though. I really was all over the place with my thing. What I'm saying, it's I've, just a I've been of- waiting to talk about the spoilers because. This movie is like so much where you're just like, I just want to, I just want to feel this shit. It was shit a lot out. to process. It's a lot to process, and it's a long movie. So like for everything, for you to go in, first off, for me to go in order of all the events that happened in the movie, we'd be we'd be here 
for forever. We're already at 51 minutes in this episode. Like, yeah. we, we would be here forever. So, like, this is one of those movies that it, you just got to got to go off the dome. Like, yeah, when and I've been writing – and I, before um, – we always do our notes. You know, I do my notes. You do your notes. When I was writing these down for the Dune 2, Dune 2 spoiler review, key scenes. First thing I wrote, Paul Fade. Paul walking up uh, – waking up from the water of life. Like, everything that was just coming to me, and not only were the scenes coming to me, the whole scenes, the whole dialogues, everything I was going, I was like, oh, that was great. That was great. It led into this. Oh, what about this scene? And that's just how I spilled it out. It was all over the place. I'm sorry. But – no, like this this movie is just that good to where I just want to talk about it. We and haven't right. even we, talked about Hans Zimmer. Hans Hans Zimmer does oh, an legend. amazing legend, job. Dude. An amazing job. But another scene I wanted to talk about. When Paul like finally realizes like what his what he's finally finna do. Like he knew it right, but he was kind of fighting it and now he's fully embraced it and he knows. When he's walking through all the Fremen, bro, with his hood on. What a bad ass scene, bro! And you you just see everyone just moving out the way in a sea just, full of people wearing white. Sea full of people. My boy is wearing black, going through, and they're parting. Not yep. necessarily fully parting it, but like they're making. They're the making little, room for him. They're to making go a around. little way, like, and they're all staring him down. And they, it's all leading into the war council. And he pulls up, and everyone's all. Who's Hans that? Z- and then the music by, behind it too. Like Hans Zimmer did an amazing job with just making it feel everything feel grand. Yeah, everything. But Hans felt, Zimmer is that dude too. Everything. Bro. Yeah, I know, I know. So, <sighs> um, yeah, we could keep talking about this movie for forever. But anyways, go see it, bro. I think people. Last minute thoughts. Okay, yeah. Last minute thoughts for it. No, you go ahead. I was gonna say last minute thoughts for Dune two. Sum it up, in you know just your last big. Uh, you know, it's just grand. Yeah. Like it's just grand. I don't know how else to say it. Like it. it is worth the hype. I feel like it needs even more hype. Um, I'm excited to see where they go with Dune Messiah because I've seen some things that doesn't end well for Paul from what I've seen in the book. Like, I haven't seen or heard. I've anything. seen people say it doesn't end well, but I just there's also like nine books, so they could go on. Oh for, God, yeah, there's a lot. I don't know how far they're. Well, going I heard part this. one for the movies. One and two are book one. Yeah. Okay. And I think the next book is Messiah. So it's not necessarily book three. It's I don't book know. Two. Yeah, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah. Um. It's just grand. That's all I can say. And it's it's literally, bro. It's just it's the biggest spectacle I feel like we've had. And I don't know. I don't know what else compares to it. I just I I don't. I can't think of another movie that I've seen at theaters that compares to how like just grand this whole thing was. Does Dune two show how hell of a how does Dune two show you how great an actor? Timothy Chalamet is. Yeah, I mean, he deserves his flowers for sure. And and he already was good. I've never had a problem with him. No, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, a I lot agree. of people think he's like douchebaggy or whatever. But like, hey, I, Alex, we're talking to you, my boy. I, I've never had a problem with Timothy. And I think after this movie, I don't know what else, what you could say. Like, he, yeah. he, he did a phenomenal job. In the, whole, the whole character, um, I'm not even going to say arc, but like shift he has once he becomes the Messiah, basically, is incredible. Like I said, the whole War Council scene just did it for me. It was worth. Is it. this the best sequel of all time? Let me go back to that. So we haven't seen a lot of sequels though. So I know we we don't deserve the right to speak on some of these movies. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and point. Yeah, this Culture out. Crave put all the Culture Crave put this uh, tweet out saying rank these sequel films. Um, I'm gonna read you off all the sequel or all the titles of these films, and then I'm gonna go ahead and let you know which ones I haven't seen. Dune Part Two, Empire Strikes Back. The Two Towers, Dark Knight, Top Gun Maverick, Aliens, uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, The Godfather Part 2, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, Blade Runner 2049, uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier, and Toy Story 2. I have not seen uh, The Godfather Part 2, Blade Runner 2049, Aliens, and I honestly can't tell you much from Terminator 2. I can't remember much. I've seen it but I can't tell you much. So I don't, I don't want to speak on it. Um, but looking at this list, like Dune is, <laughs> Dune is so I big the list on that list. Out dude. of the things that I've seen on that list, Dune 2 is better than, all but it goes back to showing you like the top three on there. Dune 2, Empire Strikes Back and Two Towers. I'm telling you, every generation has their own, like Star Wars was one. Lord every Lord generation one. has their big movie and, those three right there are those big movies. Yeah. Um. So, so for right now, dude, yeah, Dune Two is it. Yeah. It's incredible, dude. I love Captain America: Winter Soldier. We've talked about that. We've raved about the movie. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I absolutely adore. I can't wait for the third one to come out. Come out because I'm going to rewatch them. Um. We're going to watch Blade Runner 
2049. I'm ready to watch that. Top Gun Maverick was amazing. That was Top a Gun Maverick big was ass good. hit, dude. Yep. I had so much fun watching that. Dark Knight or whatever <laughs> legendary film. Yeah, legendary. But Dune 2. Part two. I just feel like it's more grand than all of those. Like I yeah. feel like the, it's just the spectacle of it all. It's just it's bigger. Like I, it's just it's yeah. absolutely amazing. And I mean, who knows, bro? Maybe it's because it's we're on such a high from it. We haven't seen a movie like I this. I truly in a don't while. think so. But now I, at this no, point. I was gonna say, but I just think it's it deserves everything. Yeah. It's so good. I think it's great. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's my final pretty much on it. It's just it's fantastic, and you have to go see it. Yeah, I, like you, like everything you said, dude. The cast is amazing. Uh, Denise Villeneuve absolutely killed it. Hans Zimmer with the music. You can never go wrong when you pick Hans. Um, Timothy is that dude. He showed it as Paul Atreides. Zendaya did well to, uh, as well. Uh, Javier Bardenas, uh, Stilgard. <laughs> Javier is amazing. You, I first met him, or I first got introduced to him from No Country for Old Men, and I mm-hmm. thought he was fantastic in that as well. Josh Brolin was in there too, you know? Was he? Pretty sure. I can't remember. But yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're right. Um, Josh Brolin did great as well in this one too. Uh, th- th- the cast is fantastic. I just keep I can't say it enough. Um, go see Dune two. If yeah. this review did anything for you, I don't know if it did, but shit, just go watch it. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not really much of a review. We're just pretty all over the place. Like we're just talking about. What's but we're talking happened, about it as if like it's just a lot to process and it's just a lot to speak about. So at the same time, I think we're talking about it as in if back in the Costco days, bro, walking in the parking lot. Yeah. How would we discuss this? Yeah. And this is exactly what we would discuss it when we just go scene by scene by scene. Oh, remember that one scene where he did this, and we just break it down yeah. from there. All right, let's get into some uh, WWE talk. Uh, SmackDown happened last night. Woo, boy. Had an epic segment. Um, we got what we've been asking for. We got the tag team matches. It's officially confirmed. Night one of WrestleMania. We we're getting the Rock and Roman versus Seth and Cody. Uh, I don't think I don't think people are understanding the history that we are living in right now. Because um, this I, is history. I texted you whatever is saying what? Legendary or this, something like this that? Is, this is history right now yeah. that we are witnessing. I don't think there's ever been a time. Uh, first off, what WWE's been doing two night WrestleManias? What now for like four or five years now? now? Yeah. There's never been a time where we are having three wrestlers wrestle on night one and wrestle again on night two. Like that's first off, that's just wild. Um, and they are huge matches that they are wrestling in, and not just that, champions yeah, too. Like these are these are huge matches that they are wrestling in because this is a big match in itself, the tag team match. And then you have Seth putting his title on the line against Drew, which is a big match. You, and then you have Roman and Cody versing each other for a huge match. So like it's just what a what a what a epic WrestleMania this is gonna be. Um, so you kind of just want to go on, on what happened on SmackDown? Yes. Uh. Okay, I wrote I wrote something down last night, but I, I always wanted to remember to bring it up. So, uh, SmackDown last night, bro. Dallas, Texas, yeah, we didn't go. Them yeah, damn we ticket prices went up. The crowd was lit though. The crowd was there. They showed up. Dallas showed up. Hey, yep. shout out to y'all, man. Dallas we, showed up for sure. Good for uh, us. <laughs> we started off the show with Logan Paul announcing the first ring sponsorship. So, it, what do you think about that? So now the UFC octagon view of how we have all these sponsorships. Could possibly be the same in WWE. Vince McMahon is probably shitting bricks. Sh- yeah, because that was one of his biggest things was he did not want any sponsorships on the ring. Because you know WWE could have had sponsorships a long time ago on the ring. Right. Personally, I don't know how I – it's going to take me some time to get used to the look. Like I sent you the tweet yesterday of, of someone said, imagine Bret Hart putting Stone Cold Steve Austin in the sharpshooter <laughs> on yeah. top of the prime bottle. <laughs> like – it's true. Like we have so many of these legendary moments in WWE, and to think like, what if there were sponsorships on the ring? Like <laughs> that's just, it's just it takes me a little bit to wrap my my mind around. Bro, it. Think about the Undertaker losing his streak, bro, laying next to a prime bottle. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that it, would be it, insane. That's bro. just it's something that I just I don't know. I guess I just truly never thought that we would get to this point where WWE. But there's so much money to be made. Yeah, and WWE right now is in the business of fully getting their there. full potential get because you, you could argue that vince kind of held them back a little bit like yeah. even with wrestlers like he didn't let them do their own uh streaming like he didn't let them do a lot of things like to go out there and make money wwe now is fully embracing what they are and they're going f- full in on like making money so i'm open to it because it's just going to be at Re- wrestlemania starting at wrestlemania and then it'll be at just uh premier live events yeah um I just hope that it's not because UFC has a lot in their. You just hope it's not every corner. 
Yeah, I kind of just hope it's not like every space that we have or something. Because uh, I assume it won't just be a prime bottle. I assume eventually we'll have some other things to put in there. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's I'm open to it. I'm not going to say it's like I'm against it. But it's just it's weird to think about. Yeah, so off the back, all I want to say is good job, Logan. Oh, bro. The good job, Logan. The dude, dude. Is, is building his this brand like crazy. And at this rate... I fully see it be, being bigger than Gatorade for sure. Like it's gonna be. I mean, this generation is taking it up like crazy. We bro, we went to the zoo a couple of days ago, and I don't know. We there was uh, school buses there, and we we're at the ah, oh, gosh damn it, man. You know, a whole bunch of kids are gonna be. You understand how many kids I saw have prime bottles yep. in their hands? Like it's insane. You're right. I mean, I never thought about it as far as being bigger than Gatorade or anything like that. But I mean, no, at this never rate, I, I this rate, I don't see how it's not. It gotta um, be. What you call it? Uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's going to be different. <laughs> I'm like it's just crazy to think about some of these moments with the prime bottle in the middle. It's definitely gonna get some getting used to. But at the same time, from a business aspect, I go good for you, Logan, yeah. dude. Screw KSI and everything. Like, that's why his bitch ass got RKO'd. But nonetheless, like, dude, hey, it's a business. Sure, yeah. go for it, dude. Yeah, and I like, I do like the aerial view. Also, they introduced. It just looked. It looks more sporty. Yeah. And that's what WWE we saw that WWE's been trying to be more of like a, a like a fight feel, like a UFC yeah. feel. So I mean, it is what it is. Um, we got the match right after with uh, Randy and KO versus Austin and uh, Grayson. Yeah. Part of me feels like we are going to get some type of multi-man uh, U.S. title match at Mania. So we had uh, Logan come out, of course, and he was going to hit Randy with the brass knucks. Randy takes him and then almost hits KO. And so then they have like a little stare off and where they're almost like teasing a little bit that we're so. But they I, dabbed each other up. Man. Yeah, they dabbed each other up it. after. But I do think that we are going to get a multi-man match. At, they should at just listen to Lim guys, dude, and take your advice and do the ladder match. Uh, bro, I, I would love it. But so I but then I think, OK, so I originally thought L.A. and A.J. would be there. I think they're going to do L.A. and A.J. one on one. I think that's what they're building up to. Mm-hmm. Um, So who knows? I don't know what type of multi-man match we'll have, but. I just I don't know, dude. I it was it was a great episode of SmackDown. Um, and then let's get into the to the segment, bro. I mean, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, do you have something else to get into? Yeah, bro. What? It's Tiffy time, boy. Oh, she killed it, she bro. She did do a good job. <laughs> I mean, she she just fought what's her face and who? Uh, Naomi. Uh, no, she fought. Oh uh, no, not Naomi. Uh, 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 the girl from the OC. <laughs> Kim, Mi- Michi Kim, or. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I'm Michi sorry. Kim or something. Yes. Hey, no disrespect, bro. <laughs> yeah. But hey, but she did good. No, yeah, she looked good. She's getting over, bro. Yeah, the crowd, She's the crowd cheered her, her when she came out. Yeah, bro. If so, we were there, I'd be. Yeah, yeah. I'd been Other than that, too, we bro. had like our la- we have our Mexican Civil War that's going on right bro, now. To be honest, <laughs> I could care less yeah. about the whole LWO to, stuff. I'm so tired of the LWO. To be honest, yes. they keep making them feel trying to make them important, and they're just not. They are um, not important so, at all, dude. Whatever. Sad. We have Legado Fen- del Fantasma too, like. It's just a pretty much a Mexican street war going on right now, and it's, <laughs> it, it is what it is. Like it's whatever. <laughs> brown on brown crime, yeah. boy. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, we did get a little Bianca. Who knows what's gonna happen with her? Like uh, Naomi felt bad for Bailey, and Bianca kind of put a little heel energy out, but she also was rightfully deserving yeah, how she feels. I was listening to her uh, and during that segment, and I text you instantly saying, "Are we about to see a heel Bianca?" But then, I mean, but at the same time, I mean, we discussed it, and you were right. No, that I mean, you said it that no, she's just. I mean, she does have a right to she feel has, the way that she feels, like, and I mean, she said a lot of good points. She made her bed. Now she has to lay in it. Like, dude, she brought everyone together. It's not her fault. I mean, it's no one's fault that they turned on her, and now she's looking for sympathy. No, but at the same time, I mean. Hell, I'd be down for a heel Bianca. Screw it. Oh, I've been wanting a heel Bianca yeah. for a long time. Um, and then we got the uh, the main segment, which went over time, bro. I knew it was gonna go over time with how long the intros were taking. Then they did a commercial. Then they then the crowd was lit, so you all the wrestlers were listening to the crowd. Uh, I just I was watching the time, and I just thought, okay, bro, like we are getting we're getting to the time, and they, WWE does not go over. They don't go over the, the nine o'clock. Um, so yeah, they went over a little bit, but I don't think we missed much because I think the the Rock I think just walked out of the ring after. Yeah, fan recordings just show that he, uh, after what happened, he just walked out of the ring. So uh, Cody, Cody slapped the good old boy Rock. First off, let's get into the Rock's entrance. What a fantastic! I noticed it right away because the lights turned black right away yeah. uh, on Roman in the Bloodline. Yeah. And then they did that different camera angle. Yep. And I thought, what is this? Is this? I noticed it right away. I thought, is this a new little thing? And so you hear this. It's the same song. And it has the rock. Then it gets quieter. But then the screen goes back and then you see the light. I thought, whoa. I was like, what? What is? Bro, what? It was badass. It was an amazing entrance. 
Um, first thing I text you, Black Adam up in yeah. this mug, bro. Like it was so cool. The lightning hit at the very end of him, and he just standing there and with he's the just light, standing there, Woo! looking like a what money, a bro. badass entrance, bro. And then and then the the bull has the red coming Ooh, out, yeah, like with the eyes. Yeah, it's got the little heelish vibe to it. Like, oh, it was fantastic. It was, first off, <laughs> whenever it first happened, you know, if you smell a crowd went wild and the uh, lights went off, I thought someone's getting. Fire! <laughs> like, wow, bro. And then the, the camera. I thought now y'all scrambling. You definitely get fired. But what? then the music turns down. I'm like, oh, bro, do not tell me it's cooking. Like with I Hollywood so. Rock. I thought so. I was I was going to lose my shit downstairs in the living room, bro. I was going to lose it. But then the lightning started going. I'm like, what the hell? This is incredible. When the oh lights went dark, God. I thought we were getting the Hollywood theme. Yes, uh, I no, thought that's all I was waiting for. It's cooking, yeah. bro. Um, it was great, great entrance, dude. Yeah, it was great. Uh, so then, uh, yeah, so pretty much we have Cody and Seth come out. They confirm, or so I don't know if you notice. Also, Seth Seth accepts the match. Cody doesn't really say anything, but Cody's looking at Seth, almost like, uh, "Why did you accept that?" Like I wasn't going to. So I I don't know if that's I don't know if that's looking too deep into it, or I don't know. And then Roman pretty much says, "Like you let this guy speak for you." So or a cross dresser, <laughs> he said a cross dresser, right? Bro, so I already saw a tweet this morning saying, "Wow, Roman's calling him a crossdresser. That's pretty messed up." Dude, I thought, "Shut dude, your whatever, ass up!" Bro. But don't he even makes start, jokes about bro. it all the time. How how Seth wears uh, Becky's clothes? It's it's fucking it's a joke. Uh, so uh, <laughs> and I'm just I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Roman, if you're watching, bro, you right, man. Hey, what Tribal Chief says goes. No. Bro. Hey. <laughs> We idiots, yeah. but <laughs> you must be an idiot or something. You almost born in Texas. And I thought, <laughs> bro, damn, got us. I bro, I literally looked at Emily and I was like, damn, babe, he got <laughs> us. And I texted you the same thing. And then you replied, hey, he called us idiots, <laughs> boy. I was like, he got us. I was like, I, was like, I, said, I am, whatever. Yeah, bro. whatever, boy. Uh, you said it. Yeah, dude. It, it was a the energy in these segments is just wild. It's amazing, like it's pay per view type energy. And it's just crazy, bro. I, I love it. And uh, Seth, the crowd started cheering Seth. Um, while they were all four standing in the ring, they were uh, doing the whoa. Like they sound a little off tune. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I think it was just everybody trying to get on tune together. <laughs> but um, yeah, bro. I mean, it's just a lot. We pretty much already knew that the tag team match was gonna happen. Now it's confirmed. So this leads me to believe. Well, Cody slapped the Rock also. So that's pretty epic. After the Rock, the Rock telling him and everything like that, like you know. Um, going back to the whole I'm your boss and everything like that, you know, uh, you shut your mouth. This is like just doing his whole um shtick with it, like how you said last time, you know, his typical shit. Um, and what does Seth tell him or oh, whatever? Uh, what does he call him a has been or something like that? Or no, yeah, you or uh, midlife yeah, crisis midlife or something crisis, like that, yeah. dude. I'm not gonna lie to you. I watch a lot of content creators react to that part when he said that. Everyone was like. Oh my! Don't do I that. I think the bro. Rock constantly saying "you walking emoji." I'm tired of I it th- already. Yes, I thought. Okay, bro, can you come up with something else? Like you no. keep saying it over yeah, and over. I'm again. over that one too. Um, but anyways, epic segment. So now let me ask you, who takes the pin night one at WrestleMania? Because all four of these people, I could justify as a reason why they shouldn't take the pin. That's a good one. I didn't even. I had never thought about it. Who takes the pin? Because I we had this conversation a couple of episodes ago, but it was for Elimination Chamber, and it was uh that's when we were debating if it was gonna happen at Elimination Chamber, and I was telling you like, well, okay, well, who takes the pin? Because all these people are leading up to WrestleMania. Now this is gonna be at WrestleMania, and three of the wrestlers fight the next night. Cody. So, I think Cody's going to take the pin. Part of me feels like the only person that could. Le- like logically take the pin is Cody also. He, I mean, you're not going to have two champions lay on their back and take that pin. You're not going to have the legendary Rock take that pin. I I mean, we said in the last episode that night one is going to go to the Rock and Roman. They're going to get that W. They're going to go night two and have judgment day, or bloodline rules or whatever. Um, I could see the whole Cody having that other that moment the way he had at the last WrestleMania where he's in the ring, bro. Roman and Rock are on the ramp, and he's just you know he's upset and everything. That can't you know that iconic photo, or whatever. We'll put the photo here in a clip or something like that. I can see that happening again, and it's just like I'm not going to get it done. Like how like it's just doubt, self doubt, and everything. Like what's going to happen now? It's just going to make everyone go like, can Cody get this done? Now bloodline rules. Like what's going to happen? Yada yada yada. I can see Cody taking the pin. Yeah. Uh. So you're right. 
Seth is not taking the pin just because he is the world heavyweight champion and he's he's fighting Drew the next night. Um, the Rock, I don't think, would even allow himself to take the pin. It, <laughs> he no. he logically would make the most sense to take the pin, but he's the Rock, and I don't think I don't think he's taking it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roman obviously is not taking it. Roman, I Hell think no. Roman, I think has the Hell most no, reason bro. not to not take the pin. So I guess yeah, that leaves Cody, and and like you said, it just honestly it even builds up more to the hero aspect of the story. He'll lose night one. You're wondering how is this motherfucker gonna get it done with bloodline rules night two, um, and it just builds it up more. And I think I think Cody takes a pin, but I think it'll lead to him winning at WrestleMania. So, um, I brought this up to Emily last night because I don't know. It just it went back to talking about our last episode where when I brought up that people are talking about on social media that what if Stone Cold shows up? You know what I keep on hearing? The Rock keep on saying, "I'm the boss. I'm the boss." Yada yada. You know how Stone Cold feels about bosses, bro. You know, Austin stunned the boss. Austin stunned the boss. What if they do that one more time? He just keeps on pointing out. He makes it really known. I'm the boss. I run this. I'm the boss. And we're trying to get rid of the whole image of Vince. We need a new Austin stunned the boss moment. What if he comes? I mean, what if the whole, you know, theory is about Stone Cold coming back and then we get that whole, you know, Michael Cole or whoever is on commentary, you know, uh, Austin son the boss. Austin son the boss maybe. moment. I don't know. That just popped up last night when I was thinking. But I was like, I'd be down for it. Like yeah, that'd be a maybe. cool little. Uh, first off, Stone Cold coming back in any type of matter would we would all be down for. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, I personally feel like if Triple H didn't have his heart stuff, I oh, think this 100%. would be one hundred percent leading to the Rock versus Triple H again. A hundred percent. You'd just be like, I run this. Yeah, shit especially with yeah. Triple H being in the position that he's in now, and then the Rock being. In the, I fully think if Triple H was able to, that we we would have the Rock versus Triple H. One hundred percent agree. But, sucks because yeah, Triple H has his issues, but and I don't want him to get in the ring. Because oh hell he, no! I ain't trying to have a hundred yeah. get a heart attack in the middle of the ring. Yeah, um, but let me ask you this too. WWE, we said it last episode, we've said it multiple times, has never felt bigger than it feels now. A lot of the, I guess you could say, is Triple H is behind that that issue, right? Uh, I sent you uh. It's this is an old clip too with MJF when he's talking about how Triple H should be on the Mount Rushmore and stuff, and he yep. names like all the people that he's made and stuff. So you add the stuff that he's you add the people that he's made, like uh, Randy Orton, Dave Batista. He reinvented Ric Flair essentially. Like he's made a lot of people uh, that I'm missing. I don't even remember all the names that MJF he said, said. Edge, Batista, yeah. Rick, Randy. <sighs> he said himself he, too. He said a bunch of names. So. And then with what Triple H is doing now, bro, I know I've said this before, but, like, how could we not put him in the discussion for, like, the greatest category. of all time WWE person? Like, you add his wrestling stuff, and then you add his stuff that he's doing behind the scenes, like, the stuff that he's done for other people's careers. Like, because MJF said it in that in that interview, and he, at Triple H, when he was, like, uh, pretty much our era, where we, like, we think of him with the world, when we see the world championship, we think of him because he had, it felt like he held it all the time, and he was, like, the biggest heel for years. Anybody uh, you put in front of him, the the crowd would cheer because they hated Triple H. Like, he's the reason for a lot of people being successful the way they are. At what point, like, do we start to think Triple H deserves more discussion to be in that conversation? No, yeah, 100%. We, I mean, you brought this up before, and it was a great point then. And then, especially after you send me that clip, it's a hundred percent another reason to add more to that conversation. And yeah, I mean, when are we going to start seeing that appreciation more? I think he gets the appreciation, but it's definitely not on the surface the way it should. I don't be. think. Well, I think he gets the appreciation, but I don't think people are putting two and two together. Like, I don't think they're putting what he's doing behind the scenes along with his career all into one. Like, I think they separate the two. And but I think if you put two together, like, I mean, his ring accomplishments alone are insane. But then you put like what he's doing after like how impactful he is for WWE like he's rejuvenated WWE it feels like so like and I, I'm sure I don't know I'm sure he's not the only one making the decisions I'm sure there's other like Nick Khan I think plays a big part too and stuff but but still he's had a creative bro yeah like I just say. think like he, he's just he's built it to a whole nother level like bro we are seeing the we're seeing sponsorships in the ring now we are seeing legendary deals like the deal with Netflix like I just I don't know, bro. I I don't know how much longer this month can go before we say like 
bro, Triple H deserves to be just the greatest of all time. He's the goat in WWE. Like uh, he's the reason that we are still. We had the at, we had the ruthless aggression era. He was a big part in the Attitude Era, and he's the big part in whatever era this is now of building this up. Like it's just I don't know. Do you count the PG era? Uh, he was still big in the PG era, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I I gotta give him. I I mean, me and you don't really like. I mean, just whatever, but. He was big in that. He was SmackDown WWE champion for a long time. Yeah, and that was in the part PG of the, era. They did the whole authority thing. Yeah, again. and they had DX and yep. so right. It was called the Authority. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, back in like 2013. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, that yeah. shit. Bro, and they turned Kane to a businessman. Boy. Yeah, and he fought with slacks, bro, and he grew his hair out. Weird, bro. Yeah, it was such a weird thing. Um, um, but no, yeah, I mean, you're definitely right. It's another reason to consider. Not, yeah. I mean, I guess just you bring it back up. It's just like, is he the goat? Yep. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, anything else to add to wrestling? Mm. Nope. Sweet. Can't think so of anything else. Next week, we will uh, uh, talk about Blade, Blade Runner 2049. Um, yeah. We'll have to watch it. Hopefully, we don't have to go back and watch the first one. Um, but I we'll see. We will, bro. Uh, and then, obviously, we'll talk about whatever happens WWE-wise. Movie-wise. Um, I want to say this on here because I want to hold us accountable to it because I've been saying this and we haven't done it. I want to make ourselves get on Buzzsprout and watch <laughs> the promos. And so we'll post the promos on TikTok. I I know a lot of people probably don't t- I know what we're talking about, but me and you do. And I'm going to put it on here. That way we have to do it. And then uh, we can post the promos on TikTok, like in clips, and then we can post the actual video on our YouTube. So I'm saying this now, so that way we for sure do it this week. Okay. Um, but uh, other than that, I don't have anything else to add. Nope, can't think of anything. Sweet. All right, we'll see you guys next week. All right, later.